Yes, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Bootcast Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. I'm here with my fellow co-host, Colby. Colby, man, how you doing today? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. Got a nice uh, package yesterday for a new pair of turfs. Oh, which are the Cop- 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 Pier Two <sighs> Elite Model. Okay. In the turfs, uh, I will say sizing is wrong on these. Got okay. them in a 9.5 US, just a bit too long. So very, very nice, comfy boot. But yeah, I'm gonna send them back just a bit too big. Do you think? Do you think a nine? Like you need to go down to a nine, or you, or, or would that be too small? A nine, a nine would work. I okay. think. I think I get. Get away with these half size down. Okay. So turf shoes never fit right, dude. I swear. Every pair of turfs I've had, I've had to go up or down. I would say so turf. I know like case. turfs and FGs like never fit the same, even right. though they are the yeah. exact same boot. They should. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I mean, well, it would help too, and this is a discussion we've always had. But if you pulled the exact upper off of it, well, I don't know because the turf bottoms, you know, mm-hmm. you never. Which is crazy because a lot of people say that they normally have to go up half a size, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's true because I have my trip you uh, to go down. Prem- yeah premieres and my Mizuno's. I have to go up half a size. Uh, the premieres are actually up full size, but oh okay, yeah okay. So let's get into this episode. This is episode nineteen, so we're gonna start it off right today. Who is your number nineteen choice today, dude? Alvarez, man, for Man City. Julian Alvarez. Juli- Julian Alvarez. Oh, yes. Oh my, that dude is such a fraud, bro. He is what? such a fraud. He's he's dude. If he's a fraud, he is dude. He's doing it the right way. He's riding the coattails of Argentina, mm-hmm. the treble off of Man City. Like that dude is right place, right time. Exactly. That's the that's what frauds do. They just <laughs> got to be in the right place. He's a grifter. Not, that boy is a fault. grifter. Nah, nah. It, he's. I just it, it. He's a fraud to me because people are like, oh, he's Ballon d'Or, blah blah blah, and it's like, no, bro, Messi won Argentina World Cup, and he's like, oh, yeah. he's Ballon d'Or with the trouble. It's like, no, like Holland and KDB kind of won, and then Rodri kind of won him. Yeah, so he's a fraud. Look, man, my boy McAllister, he's riding that same wave, dude. Dude, he's, it's, he's doing at least fine. he like does something. I feel like Julian Alvarez is not good enough to play his position at Man City, <laughs> but I mean, who beats Holland? And then they put him at the ten, and the kid just looks lost. He looks yeah. so lost when he plays at Manchester City. Hey, whatever, man. Whatever. Yeah, it's each their own, right? My my 19 is Fernando Torres when he went back mm. to Atletico Madrid towards the end of his career. He was rocking 19 because 9 was already gone. Um, uh, oh, we've talked about him too many times. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that answer. Yeah, he, he got bold when he went back there, too. He started getting uh, – there was a, a, a clip you can look at where he starts getting a fight with Ronaldo. With Ronaldo? Calls him a clown. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. And his documentary yeah. is so good, and it's so sad because I think he deserved better, especially when he went back. But mm-hmm. Simeone has, like, a huge ego, and those two have, like, always kind of clashed heads, and that's kind of yeah. why he got screwed over. But, no, I love Fernando Torres. Yeah, he was the uh, the captain at Atletico before, before he yeah. left for Liverpool, right? Yeah. yeah. Youngest yeah. captain ever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that was my – it's like naturally I'm going to go with Fernando Torres. Yeah, I'll accept that. Um, okay, so let's get into this episode today. Um, what do you want to start with? Because there, there was a lot of releases. There's a lot of updates <sighs> that we've got to go through. So much, So dude, we're just so going to kind of like kind of hit the ground running. So you pick the topic um, first. Let's talk about the uh, the Pearl version of the Tempo 30 because that did come out this morning. Yes. So, yeah. Um, Aesthetics-wise, I think it looks much better mm-hmm. than the Emerald boot. I know you like that boot a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but that white base, dude, mm-hmm. with that like reflective sole plate, or it's not, it's not reflective, but it like it goes from like the emerald color into like a white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Looks, it looks good. No, it's a great looking boot. I know you're like stoked, and you've been like, you know, really, you know, uh, kind of biting on your nails to get these um, yeah. i like them i just like the the emerald better because mm-hmm. it's different but the soul plate and the swoosh on the pearl is like chef's kiss yeah and it comes in a nice uh velvet string bag which oh yeah that string bag was something nice <laughs> it was nice that was uh, so overkill <laughs> but it was nice looking. it was it was overkill and then i think on unisport Mick was like look you put your pearls in a velvet bag so you're gonna put these boots in a velvet bag and i'm like Okay. <laughs> You're like, yeah, sure. And then I'm going to wear them and All just right. destroy them instantly. Yeah. And I actually was able to get a pair of these. So um, Let's go. it must not have been as limited as as I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be like Trent Boots where I was going to have to enter a raffle and freaking lose out on that. So Okay. Well, you've already you've already started pivoting quickly. I know. Yeah. The, the, the Nikes, I will say, still hyped. Still not sold on the Tiempo 10. 
You know, I, I want to try you. You'll have to let me know if that quilted mm-hmm. pattern feels different because you had yeah. the turfs and everything recently. But um, yeah, I'm just going to probably wait until the emerald probably goes on discount because it doesn't really look like that one. It's too sought after. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think they're going to sit there for a while and you'll probably get it at a good discount. It was pretty cool that they came out with the emerald. And I saw like there were some in kid sizes so I could get some for my son if I want to. And there's also some in a turf model, which is pretty cool of Nike because I thought those two colorways were just going to be on the uh, top tier mm-hmm. um, FG model. So that was pretty you... cool of Nike. Okay. I just had this thought while we were talking. Do you remember the gold pair of Tiempos that released? The golden touch ones? Like the um, upper, how long ago? Was, it, like right when they came out, the upper was gold, and Noah had them. And yes, had, okay, okay, yes, okay. Yes, yes, this Do generation, you think this generation. That, that would have been a better thirtieth anniversary color than the emeralds. Yes, really. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, I mean, only because. Well, okay, so we're talking the thirtieth year anniversary. So really, like what, like black and white would have been, you know, yeah, like the most relatable to that that era. Um, but I always associate gold with the tempo because of Ronaldinho. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, the Emerald Pearl thing, that's, that's pretty cool too. It actually kind of reminds me of Pokemon a little bit. I feel yeah. like you ship topics when I'm like <laughs> Pearl and Emerald, yeah, like yeah, yeah. red and blue, gold and silver. Like, okay, <laughs> whatever. No, I think, I definitely agree. I think it would, be- and another thing I think that would be cool is like, cause they have the two different um uppers you know their regular fly touch mm-hmm. pro or whatever and then this fly touch plus or whatever the heck it's called it'd be cool if the emerald was just a regular colorway and then the pearl and the gold were kind of your like t- that would have been cool. 10th anniversary so you could have like right. two equally uh rare things and then kind of each yeah, version that, that golden touch one was interesting because that wasn't the law they kind of snuck that one in between something in the prototype if i remember correct it was like the what they did the the women's world cup which was the yellow one, and then they did the um, white and red. Mm-hmm. Then they had like a black and blue, maybe, mm-hmm. and then they had the gold, mm-hmm. and then they had the prototype, which mm-hmm. is the one that that I liked. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Nike, and then, um, well, and even speaking on that, we talked about how the pro- you, clearly the prototype Tiempo was supposed to be the launch, like the teaser mm-hmm. colorway, and then yep. we've seen the the Vapor Sixteen and Superfly Ten you know teaser and everything and that is Mm -hmm. also called like the prototype and it's got like handwritten stuff but that one actually seems to be like it's going to be the first edition so i want to know what's going on in nike's production release that these colorways are kind of like you said they're out of nowhere yeah it's it's weird i i don't know why it's so like the way it is i mean it's kind of funny because like talking about the tiempo 10 colorways is almost kind of paralleling the predator colorway it's like what is this i don't know here's another one here's another one here's another one um yeah i think they just mostly delayed that prototype version though because of the uh women's world cup right was that the same time when they came out with the orange ones yeah i think so because i think that the the tiempo 10 and the didn't the luna come out at the same time for that world cup yes yeah the luna was about that time too that white out yeah, or it was like a white with yeah, that orange. Yeah, see, so black the white orange Luna was out for like mm-hmm. two weeks, and then they came out the orange Luna, and then the the orange Tiempo, and then later they came out the white prototype. It's just very yeah, something. Things are getting shifted, and it, I feel like it's pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah, um, yeah so marketing moves are being made. Okay, so I want to talk about marketing. So the Trent boots came out what Monday last week, like right yes. after we recorded. I think the next yeah. day or something they came mm-hmm. out. I didn't even try because uh, I'm not going to buy Trent's boots. Which which was smart. Yeah. Which was smart of you not to try. And because you did. I did so, try. So, okay. I want to hear this process that you had to go through to even attempt to buy them. I only tried to buy them from two places. One was soccer.com. Okay. Um, which uh, was – you can enter a raffle – and um, get the opportunity to buy the boots, which they said that, you know, went ahead, put in my information and didn't even put a size in. Um, and they were supposed to email me. Never got the email. Guess I wasn't selected. Same thing for um, Pro Direct. Put my information in with a size. And then they would hit me up, um, DM me through Instagram, which I also didn't get a DM. So um, lost out on both of those, which, I mean, that's, I guess that's better than leaving it open for people to just, grab them all within less than you know 
20 minutes. So it's, it, it's probably better that way to split a thousand boots, you know, just to do a raffle system. So, cause I, as I saw today with the, um, the pro version of the tempo, they did it in the more traditional way, which is limit one per customer. You get on, you get your pair of boots. If you know about it, you know, I think it came out on soccer.com about this morning and they still had pairs maybe, maybe about two hours after, um, I saw it on their Instagram. So not too bad. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that I've ever heard of soccer.com doing a raffle. Normally they just yeah. kind of put their stuff out there. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't expect that. Um, so, and then you have to get it. So, um, I had to get the link through both of those through the Trent boots through their stories. I couldn't get, like, you couldn't go to their websites and find it. You had to go to the, well, at least for me, I went to the Instagram, found the link in the story. And then that took me to a special, um, thing where I had to fill out my information. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause he like the Rotero was just first come first serve. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? If you got them awesome. And I saw people's like when they were updating, People throughout the whole day, like, oh, my order's canceled. But I never got the email. I never got the email. And then finally got, like, oh, your order shipped. Um, but I mm -hmm. know Pro Direct, so that one doesn't surprise me that Pro Direct tried to raffle it. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, how do you feel about those boots being released? Because we've talked about it. Yeah, that's, I know. I feel like we just, this should be called the Predator Podcast because that's, you know, <laughs> what we really what we land on. And I mean, it, it's just so relevant right now. And I'm sure eventually we'll move on from this topic. But, um, they looked, they looked incredible. I mm -hmm. saw the, uh, pro direct video where they gave them directly to Trent. I think on, uh, the football boot hour, they kind of discussed how it looked like, you know, almost like that pearlized version that they just made some modifications to. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you've kind of talked about when they were, um, originally based off of what the tag on the inside says kind of originally made, which I know we came up with some, what, some March dates on that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to talk about was because, okay, so on my orange uh, Pred Strike, right, the production mm -hmm. date was 9-23, okay? And then my Rotero's is uh, January of 24. Trent wore his original one-to-one one -one custom boots December of 23. And then mm -hmm. his Trent boots didn't go into production until uh, March of 2024. So last month. So again, this is one of those things because I was listening and I've talked with James and, and uh, Andrew Lockhart, the guys over at the Football Boot Hour podcast, and they thought, oh, there's no way that that fans uh, – I, I don't want to say outrage, but fans clamoring for this boot is what caused Adidas. They probably always planned it. But based on those production dates alone, that to me signifies that Adidas was like, oh, crap like this one really <laughs> caught on and they've seen kind of like the mass success that is this predator generation so like mm -hmm. all right let's scramble let's put let's get a some pairs made let's put it out like we know they're gonna sell like hotcakes you know they didn't upcharge them they only made a thousand pairs so again like with the thousand pairs when the production date is this is to me this is like one of those big brands saw people wanted something so bad that they're like all right pause Let's make this super quick. Let's put out what we can. You know, we'll cap. I mean, they're going to capitalize on it, no problem. But they're like, let's right. just put out what we can. We'll go from there. And they made it like a whole event again. You know, I saw. Um, I think it was. G I think it's Jay Lee Leon. His Instagram. He was at the Trent um, like event. So they they were doing like the shootout thing, and you know, Trent showed up, signed some boots, and all this cool stuff, which I thought was super awesome. Mm -hmm. But again, this the this boot specifically seems like the most hail mary like scrabble around and then they've come out on top again yeah yeah that's kind of funny that you just said like oh crap mm -hmm. people actually like these like you don't want this yellow electricity pack or like this <laughs> like throw up generation looking <laughs> leopard spotted green you know like this is what you want like yes yes that's what we want yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, we, we, you know, we've beaten this horse, we've beaten this horse, we've beaten this horse, but it's just like every tongue model constantly sells out. I've seen mm -hmm. websites restocking tongue models, like trying to keep up. The scalpers are going crazy. The resellers are going crazy with the tongue model, but you have the launch, essentially the launch colorway in the tongue. You got a no problem. Mm -hmm. The laceless models, no problem. So again, I don't, I don't understand how Adidas didn't like genuinely didn't see this tongue model being such a success. Yeah, it is kind of it is kind of strange, and man, they they are capitalizing on it. And we'll talk about um, another story here in a second, where it's just like, are we hitting the point of nostalgia overload? You know, sort of sort of like the um, 
it's almost like when the Marvel Cinematic Universe just did one too many. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, like we've had enough of these, you know, we've had enough of these nostalgia moments. Like we can only pull our our wallet out so many times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I've seen colorways. We've seen the leaks. I've seen up to the, I think it's the Japan blue. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I haven't really seen any more predator colorways that i know of that are like you know leaks or on the horizon or anything and somebody had put out a a theory that we call it the pred 30 but it's just been the predator elite right but everybody keeps referring mm -hmm. to it as the pred 30 some people yeah, are wondering the if there's gonna I've be heard. yeah yeah or 24 if there's gonna be 30 colorways like they're just gonna like pump them out because adidas i mean i don't even i've lost i genuinely have lost track of what number we're at at this point but it's oh, only yeah, april sure. So basically, if they – or even if it's the Pred 24, if they put out two colorways every month, mm -hmm. you've hit 24. Yeah, that is an interesting thought. And um, Adidas does have – I don't want to say they have shorter life cycles because all life cycles of boots really like fluctuate and change. But I think the um, – we, we got these introduced in December technically of 2023, right? Because mm -hmm. that's when we had the 30 and then we had the Pred Strike colorway. Mm-hmm. So if the Japan blue is like the furthest one out that you've seen that we know is coming in the summer, then I don't think they'll change the generation after that. But I could see like maybe December again, switching over to something new. I mm -hmm. don't know that for sure, but that's at least what they had done with their Copa pure model. They switched over to the two pretty quick. I want to say like maybe within this, like within the same year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they did. Yeah, they're no stranger to, to changing it up. Yeah. The Copa definitely. And I think that the X has had a year lifespan. I want to say that the accuracy had roughly a year. I feel like Adidas is kind of on this year ish mm -hmm. lifespan, but again, like I said, it's, it's just crazy. Cause we saw all these leaks, all these boots coming out. And then, like I said, we get to, the Japan era in I think this was come out in June or say mm -hmm. early June, and then I and then after the Euros I, I I just haven't seen anything and I think it's weird that nothing's being put out there popping up like even Footy Headlines doesn't have anything. So yeah, 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 that is pretty interesting. Um, that would be cool. I mean, like I feel like that's something that they should announce ahead of time. Say like, hey, we're gonna put out thirty colorways of this boot, and then mm -hmm. we're gonna stop and and then go into the next gen. But um, they tell us at the very end, we get the thirtieth colorway. We're all just completely <laughs> done by that point. Oh yeah, hey guys. Well, and part of me wonders too if they've if they've done like kind of uh, they've they've all like put all the colorways up on the front load, and then they'll just kind of mm -hmm. keep restocking them periodically because we've seen the white ones get restocked, the black ones get restocked. I've seen the electricity and the the launch one, you know, the black, orange. Mm -hmm. So I've seen every colorway besides the teaser, the Rotero, and the Pred 30 get restocked, right? Is that all of them? And the trends. Yeah, yeah non, non special edition. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. the standard colorways. So I'm curious to see what Adidas is going to do with this because it'd be cool if they kind of keep restocking so you kind of feel like you have a chance of getting. If you really want yeah, to, yeah, that, that is that is a pretty cool thing that Adidas does, and they I noticed that they started doing that. Um, well, I don't know how I don't know how often they've done this sort of restocking thing, mm -hmm. but I did notice that when they put out the um, I think it was the latest X model, they redid all of the whiteout colorways and the blackout colorways mm -hmm. um, for their control and their uh, couple boots. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And then just a quick update for I've had a ton of people message me. Um, no more crack soul plates from what I can tell. It seems to have kind of stopped with the black when the black and white the blackouts and the whiteouts came out. So mm -hmm. for anybody who wants to keep asking me and DMing me, that's totally cool. I don't mind answering. But like my Roteros don't have any um cracks. My Pred Strikes haven't, and I haven't seen any on the electricity or anything like that. So again, it was just kind of the orange, the white the black and then i did have a couple of people say that their 30 started to crack a little bit so i'm gonna say it's probably again it's kind of like the same thing that um substance football said about the early gx2 you remember when people were like complaining they're breaking mm -hmm. just could be something wrong with the plastic they haven't figured it out because it's early in the lifespan you know it's just like cars mm -hmm. when a new car model comes out you never want to get the first generation because it always is yeah. like terrible and mm -hmm. has all these kinks so definitely again everybody no crack soul plates from what I know. If if my Rotero's crack, I'll let you know. I promise I will let you know on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, speaking of your uh, Roteros, not to just keep flipping from subject to subject, okay. but you did say you did say that there is something happening with those, right? It's not a yeah. plate crack. Okay, so this is like just, just super minimal, and it, and it's nothing like, oh my god, it's it's you know world shattering. But I noticed that um, my Roteros have been ble- I, I, bleeding, but the red on them has been bleeding. So like my laces in certain areas, it's really hard to see on camera. But they're starting to turn pink, and I wear white true socks, and like all around like the heel area, like where it cups, it's just turning my socks pink. So mm-hmm. again, it's not a reason to not buy my, not wear my Roteros or not buy them or anything like that or any other boot. But I just want to let people know because I like talking about the Roteros yeah. every chance I can yeah. get. I yeah, love, we know you do. I love the boot, you elite, bro. You elitist. It's, oh, like yeah, okay. Like here, here's an even like I just just noticed this, but like I have. Uh, Swap my insoles and even like my insoles starting to get red. Oh yeah. So again, I don't know what yeah. it is. It's just the dye. I'm sure you know it gets sweaty. It gets moist and red. Red dye in general tends to bleed. This is a really deep red. So yeah. But the Roteros, yeah. other than that, wonderful. They're breaking in great. They feel great. No issues. Yeah. There you go. Ro- Rotero update. We nobody yeah. asked for the Rotero that nobody asked about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so let's keep talking we're gonna we're gonna hit another pred topic that i brought up last week literally like the day after i mentioned them they've kind of popped back up on instagram but is the 94 remakes yeah um so i know they got released on adidas in i think it was malaysia we saw and some of our friends showed us and then um one of the reseller guys I follow, um, Boothead Malaysia, he has a pair in hand, and he was like showing them off in his story the other day. They're fusion skin, so for anybody who wants leather, we now know fusion skin means leather mm-hmm. upper. Um, but they were very clunky looking. Yeah, they still yeah. look kind of cheap to me. They do. They do look cheap. I, I, I'm excited that they're fusion skin. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like the sole plate, mm-hmm. but I will not be getting those boots. No, I just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. The coolest part on, on that whole boot to me, and, and this is like, so this kind of speaks to where I feel about the boots, but on the sole plate, it's like see-through plastic. And like, there's the eyes, the predator eyes, they put like that graphic. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's super cool. And so far that's like the coolest part of that boot for me. Like it's a cool boot, it's a cool everything. It just shows its age, and it's just yeah. I it, it has a very much. It has a this is a collector boot vibe to it. Yeah, and what I was gonna say also, it's not like you or I will even get a chance to get these if the rumors are correct that they're only going to release one thousand nine hundred ninety four pairs for nineteen ninety four. Um, cause we're, we're going to be in the same boot as the same boot, same boat as the Trent boots in that scenario. So we might be entering raffles even to get those. For sure. I think it, honestly, I do think that they'll be easier to get than the Trent boots because mm-hmm. a lot of people that are into the predators, it, it's the predator right now is in a, in a weird spot because it definitely is pulling a lot of the nostalgia people and like some of the old heads like, okay, like. This reminds me of an old boot I used to wear. I'll try it out. And then you got young mm-hmm. kids who are like, oh, my God, all the pros are wearing it. It's the new model. I got to get it. And yeah. so I think it's it's kind of like found this sweet spot. But I think the 94, the rubber elements on it, I think the aesthetic of the boot is just too old school. Agreed. Like I'm 32, and I was three when that boot came out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I love the Mania. The Mania is pretty much the oldest side. What was before the Mania? The Mania, the Precision. The Accelerator is, I know it's like timeless. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite, but like kind of the Mania for me is where it's like, or or I'll say the Precision is where it starts. And then everything else from there with the tongue, I'm like, oh my God, I got to get them all. Like like you with Pokemon. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think think at the time, like 94, like when you start putting those rubber elements on the toe, it's like, oh God, that's so, you know, that's so new. It's so innovative. Mm -hmm. Um. So it is it is definitely like a shift entirely in the boot market and it really is kind of one of the first um I made a video about this actually you can go to Caveman with Colbs and look at, look at it but it really shameless is kind plug. of the shift yeah shameless plug <laughs> um <laughs> um with uh that model and then um like the premiere and so it it's almost like the very first point where they kind of go in that 
control boot direction, like if you will. So, mm-hmm. pretty yeah, cool. Pretty no, cool. definitely cool. It's cool to see what they do, and maybe you know, once we see them in person or in hand, if we ever get ever even get to see them, we'll be like, oh yeah, this really did work. I wish I would have got these. But as of now, from the videos I've seen and the leaks I've seen, cool piece. I probably won't buy them though. They're just not for me. Yeah. So yeah, not for me either. So no shame in that. No. Um, speaking of boots that are not necessarily for either of us, um, I know last week we talked about um, the New Balance collaboration with um, Unisport. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, right after that, Puma actually had a collaboration with them as well um, with the Great Wave uh, pack, which both of those, the Future and the King, look, to me, they look awesome. Yeah. Um, so um, I think what we had... I had seen though was um, because I was looking at how many pairs were left. This was earlier this week. Um, It looked like the King was completely sold out in my size, but they may have actually restocked Unisport has, which is kind of cool. So if you, if you thought you missed out, then you may actually still be able to pick a pair of the uh, great wave Puma Kings. Yeah, no, um, I, I think that that collab, that collab kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I know it's based on that painting. I don't know if the painting is called Great Wave or what. It's like mm-hmm. a really famous Japanese painting. Um, but this is one of the this is see this is one of those times where when we've ripped on Puma and we've ripped on Unisport for some of the the designs that they've done. This is one of those mm-hmm. ones where like Pu- uh, Unisport walked up and just knocked it out of the park. Like these oh, are absolutely. fantastic looking boots. I'm not normally a fan of the future. Absolutely love the future. And then the King, bro on aesthetics oh, alone the king is like 10 out of oh, 10 absolutely 10 out of 10 yeah they've got freaking um the rising sun mount fuji like the way it's just it's an incredible looking boot yeah so it's it's a beautiful like it, this is a very 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 good looking collaboration yeah yeah this one definitely won't sit there like their uh no their others have no so, this one's I, never gonna not go on sale either yeah so i mean yeah, we literally just talked. We just talked so much crap about Unisport collabs and how they just sit there and how they'll never go on sale. And then, yeah, we just had to put it in the university. We had to put the uh, Pred ninety four in the university. Yeah, we had to put the Unisport we're like collabs. willing it. We're we're just willing it. Basically, um, we just have to shit on things for them to do excellent. Exactly. So. But so so while we're talking about this, why do you think that the Ultra is not featured? Um. I don't know because I would assume so if they really wanted to do well with sales of um, like the boots that aren't selling well, you'd say like Ultra King, right? Because Future is probably the best selling model. Um, yeah, so that is that is strange that they went for the King. Um, maybe it'll get people to actually get themselves in a King and see if they like it. Um, I know I've talked about it's not a it's not a horrible boot. I really like the sole plate of it. I just think that heel depth is too shallow. So this is a way to kind of if you just wrote it off and didn't actually try it, it's a way to kind of get yourself introduced to it. Maybe um, you know build the hype around it. But yeah, they, I think they may have might have missed a step by not putting the ultra in that pack. What do you think? I wonder if that ultra teaser that we saw. Um, you remember whatever the, the mm-hmm. F one. I yeah. wonder if that has a part to play in this, because maybe Puma and and, and Unisport were both like, "Hey, the the Ultra is going to be like changing, so don't we can't give you the boot yet." You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like there's nothing for you to prototype it on. Um, like you said, maybe it was a way for them to be like, "Hey, we need help with King sales," because I think mm-hmm. every collab that Unisport has done has been the Future and the Ultra, right? I don't think the yeah. King has ever had one. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, so but, so I think that this is might be their way like hey, let's 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 push the king out there a little bit. The future obviously doesn't really need help, but um yeah, I think that that weird teaser ultra we have and now th- it not being part of this collaboration is really going to make me think that those are about to come out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good thought. Yeah, and it does seem co- okay, and here's the other thing too, which we can also talk about is we know confirmed that the um, F50s, are, they're dropping the X name, Adidas is. Mm-hmm. Those are coming out in the summer. Vapor 16s are coming out in the summer. You almost want to like add to that competition with the Ultra and showing it like in a new in a new way. So that's this is going to be a really exciting summer for speed boots if Puma's uh, Ultra is around the corner. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it could be a, like the title race in the Prem. It could be like a, th- a legitimate yeah. three-horse race. I mm-hmm. think that... I think that Puma is always just going to be at a disadvantage just because of the name, honestly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but from what Halty has said about those F-50s, they seem very interesting to me. The Vapor 16 looks just naturally interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm just like, my my curiosity is very much already peaked with those. And, oh, yeah. And that Puma looks cool. So if, if the regular <laughs> edition is anything like that teaser one that we've seen, mm-hmm. I might actually give the Ultra a shot. Yeah, yeah, that was a really cool looking boot. Um, I I would prefer something a little less aggressive. So if I was picking a speed boot right now, just based off of that um, F1 model, the Vapor 16 and the F50, I'd go F50 just off the sole plate alone. Mm-hmm. But that's just me personally. Yeah. Do you think with that F50, because Halt has done the um, the one, we're we're gonna assume it's like the plus model, the current plus, mm-hmm. and then the uh, he did the laceless, and then we think that there'll probably be a laceless with laces and that'll be the normal yeah. one. Yeah. Which one of those three F fifties do you think that you would try or, or you would be more inclined to? Um, I, I don't know. I don't mind. Um, I think Adidas has done a very good job recently with their U throat tongue. Um, the one that they've done on the predator. Mm-hmm. So like, I wouldn't mind trying you if, if that one is like what you said, like the plus model and the one below that's going to be like a knit, um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of into the U throat thing right now, so I think I'd go for the plus model. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I know you like if, so like let's say for you if those three boots come out within a similar time frame, let's say like within two months of each other, one month of each other, which boot are you going for? The Mercurial. Yeah. Yeah, that sole plate looks so cool. Mm-hmm. And, and it just I've on my Frankie boot episode that we did. If if nobody's watched it, I have the world's gaudiest boot. But on the base of it, I wanted the 2015 um, F50 uh, Soul Plate, and this Mercurial seems to be like the closest thing that we've gotten to that again, especially with the 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 spine of spikes. So I'm mm-hmm. really really curious to see how that one goes. I'm not a Mercurial guy, but that one I'm like, ooh, like I I need to try that. Yeah, awesome man. <laughs> All right, man. So we're going to transition topics here again. Okay. So so earlier, right, we we're talking about, you know, the Predator, nostalgia, everything's selling out. Well, it seems like they've caught on to this. They have a lifestyle shoe right now that they've named the, um, well, that's coming out. They've named it the Adidas Predator Mundial. <laughs> Very much playing on nostalgia of their Very two much. longest names. And like it's not a bad looking shoe. I have nothing. I have no problem with the shoe. The shoe actually looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like a more uh, like beefy, um, you know, just like what you'd expect in like a casual like lifestyle shoe. For sure. Three 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 stripes are pretty big, but like, come on, man. The Predator Mundial. That's a. I, I just, mean, it's a mouthful. I. <laughs> you know, and it from like, what I've seen, it just looks like a what a, a beefier samba, basically. Basically. Yeah. Basically. I mean, yeah. again, we've we've talked about it. We've referenced it. Like Adidas is like on this nostalgia <laughs> wave, and they're gonna yeah. ride that wave. No pun intended. To that Puma pack, but yeah. l- let them ride it. Like I think the naming is so stupid. I don't really understand most of these brands names right. as it is. But those shoes do look sick. Like I am. They do look. They I do. That's what them. I'm saying. I have no problem with the shoes, man. They look cool, but like the Predator Mundial. That's like Predator if Nike Mundial. was like, hey, we have this we have this lifestyle shoe. It's the Mercurial Tiempo. <laughs> it's awesome. Dude, you know like, that if those were gold and Ronaldinho was wearing them, you would buy them. I would buy You'd them. Like, I would I'd wear them. them. Forget the name. Yeah, yeah. I mean absolutely. It, it, it's like it's like you always say, dude. People vote with their wallet. Mm-hmm. And if we keep paying for all this stuff, they're gonna keep ma- they're gonna keep doing it. Exactly. So These it's, brands, it's our fault. It, these brands have nobody to blame but us, and it is yeah. strictly our fault. Yeah. You need to do better, Colby. You're <laughs> part of the problem. I am part of the problem. I did buy those tempos this morning, but look, <laughs> velvet, velvet string bag, Justin. Dude, all right. What if the boots were velvet? Would you wear those? No. Oh God, it'd <laughs> be awful. <laughs> that would be terrible. That'd be like that would be a gaudy boot, a velvet yeah. tempo. Oh Jesus! It was just kind of ho- okay. So like, think of of all the things mm-hmm. you know on the like the the thirty because with the Predator thirty, you saw the box right for those Predator thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing was legit. Yeah, that was legit. But I get a velvet string bag for my Nike tempos, which yeah. What what okay. other was it the uh, was it the teaser legend nine that had 
velvet too, or was that just suede bags? It might have just been suede. You mean that's? Are you talking about? Is that the uh, kind of prototype looking, like white out with the silver? Yes. They did like a car. They did like a car advertisement. It was like the flashy cool. looking ones. It's like the paparazzi mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I yeah. remember that had the little shoe bags too. Yeah. You know, I had a, the opportunity to get those um, on the day, and um, but I think I saw Josh's review, and it had like, like the way it shined. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I was like, eh. And then I was like, I'll wait for the next one. And then I didn't like like the next two or three colorways. So I should I, I still regret not getting that boot. That's okay. See, you have you always have like buyer's remorse, but you also have like not buyer's remorse. Yeah. Like yeah. you're always wanted- like in this back and forth. But I know you, if you would have bought them, you would have looked at them and been like, Yeah, it's not really my thing. And then you just sold yeah. them anyways. And you'd be yeah. like, Oh, why yeah. did I do that? I have a problem, like, this is weird, but I want to try everything, but I also have a personal problem with excess. Like, if I had the amount of boots that you have, I'd be like, oh, my God. Like, I have to get, you know, rid of, like, at least, you know, three quarters of this. I have to cut it down to, like, my, you know, ten best pairs or my five best pairs. That's just how my brain works. I just, I ha- with anything, it's not just boots. It's, like, everything in my life. I'm, I, I'm the kind of person who loves, I love spring cleaning. I love like clean spaces so are you this a is minimalist? like the one i'm not minimalist but okay. this is the one like i'll say boots are the one area i dabble in that i have a like you know for me a lot okay of, uh so see no that's fair because like i see i i'm in the same boat where i want to try everything like i genuinely do but like i just don't make enough money and mm-hmm. i have small children and a wife so i cannot buy all these boots Right. Like if I had the ability, yeah, I trust me, I'd buy everything. But mm-hmm. when it comes to me, like I'm pretty minimalist with my clothes. Like I just wear a lot of black and I have like three pairs of pants total. But when it comes to shoes, shoes and socks, it's always like kind of the way that I like flare up my mm-hmm. life. So like yeah. I have like way too many of both. Right. Like yeah. I have and- the same van in like seven different colors. Oh wow! Like vans. Sorry, the shoes, not the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We 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 knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, dude. I I have that problem too. I actually have a I have a big problem with um throwing things out. Like, let me. Well, stuff that I've worn a lot of that I end up really really liking. Something here. Oh, guys, technical difficulties. Colby is going to show us something. Like these are my Nike Premier Two Salas, like falling apart. I don't even have like a. Oh wow! Inside of them, but like I refuse to like it's like like chunks coming out of here. Yeah, see, so you know, but, like I refuse because I like these are some of my favorites, and I'll just keep wearing them till they fall off. Oh yeah, see, so you know, I'm I have like no problem just like throwing stuff away, but it's just like I just like when it comes to especially boots, and I want to try a lot, a lot yeah. of boots. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta. I mean, I don't know. For me, like I'll I'll get them. And I'll I'll make trade like I have a, a friend right now who really needs a pair of boots and I'm uh seeing like if he he just tore his uh Cope Mundial so um lent him my GX twos and he may actually buy them from me. I'm like, okay, cool. That's uh one pair of boots, now I can enter one more. You know what I mean? It's almost yeah, like yeah. like one has to go out for one. I would say in, you have like five spots and it's like you have to get rid of one in order to put a new mm-hmm. one. Like you can't just add yeah. a new spot. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm like, I'll just buy a whole new set of five, and I'll buy a new show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's how I, I mean, I'm I'm one of those big people where you know some of the some of the boots everybody gives me a hard time because I won't wear them. I'm just like, no, they're they're not meant to be worn. But when I wear boots, like I do like to wear boots and try to constantly. Because how do you know what you like if you don't try everything? Right. That's exactly. always been my philosophy with boots. Like, how do you mm-hmm. genuinely know what you like if you don't yeah, try? It? That's like our uh, our friend Mark uh, GCFC. And he had tried a bunch of boots, and then he land. I think he landed on the ultras, and he's yeah. like, "I don't care what you guys say. Like this mo- is my boot now, and like this is my favorite one." We're like, "All right, bro. I'm glad you tried enough to where you land on that one. Yeah. And you said you liked it. it, you know. And again, like, you know, and everybody, it, it just goes to show like everybody's different. But like that's how I'm with the edge. Like nobody else likes the edge but me, and I'm totally okay with that because it fits my foot. I think they're cool looking. I think they're pretty comfortable." So, hey, yeah, I wouldn't get yeah. steals on all these different pairs of edges if I never tried them. 
That is cool, yeah. That's like a boot that you like that nobody else likes, that you can have as many of them as you want, as good of deals as you want. Yeah, hey, dude. More power to you. Freaking uh, uh, Andrew went to a store in Japan actually yesterday, and he got me a pair of the um, uh, 94, re- like the Edge 94s, the leather ones, mm-hmm. and he got them for 100 bucks. So he's like, hey, That's I got awesome. them for you. I'll send them out. I'm like, heck yeah. And like, yeah. even with shipping from Japan, it still came out to cheaper than I could get over here. Nice. Those are uh, those are laceless, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's yeah, the, I remember those. they're like full leather. They look like the ninety four. They're they're pretty plain overall, but mm-hmm. that's a pair I've been wanting. Um, I feel like Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, like all the edges. <laughs> I just got to get like one pair of each edge. And I'm like, oh, yes. God. You snap your fingers, and then all of our boots turn to edges. Dude, and we all oh have to man, suffer that'd be awesome. Wear them with you together. <laughs> yeah, I like summon some fucking dragon, like Dragon Ball Z, when I get all the edges together. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I love that boot. No, I love that boot. Um, That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna. It's gonna be a shorter episode today, but this week you've been playing. What have you been wearing? Give me some predator updates. Um. Yeah. So we're in the preds. I I love them. Mm-hmm. Um. I really really do. I think I think most of it, ironically, I mean, it, it will. It's the fit. It's two things, right? Um. Because with the GX, like the the fit was good. Um, especially if you're a wide-footed person, but this, I mean, there's nothing that really wraps your foot quite this close, at least for me right now. And then the sole plate is fantastic. Like those two things alone, I, I don't really care too much about the grip elements. That's just kind of a an extra perk. But the overall um, fit, closeness, and then the stability has just been fantastic. So I'm gonna keep wearing those. Cool. Um, we have the tempos coming in, so you're gonna have to give me an update. Yeah. Are you gonna? Do you think you actually wear the tempos? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to keep playing with my velvet back. No, um, I, I don't know, man. Um, I think I'll be very, very tempted to wear them. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're so limited, I'll probably wait a little bit. Um, but I have the, uh, white pair of preds coming in, um, tomorrow actually from Julio. So I'm going to give those a go. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully he, you know, loosened them up a little bit more for my, my fat feet. That, that is one thing that's actually nice about making trades and buying used boots from other people is that you don't have to worry about the break in time. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's something that like for me who, uh, like my pinky toe still has a blister on it. So I'm hoping that when I get his tomorrow, nice, yeah. and, nice and comfy. And the cool thing is you'll be able to like, finally see what I was telling you about, like all those episodes ago about how the uppers feel different. Like you're finally going to yes. be able to like see that and, and a direct comparison, like one to one. So that'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well with that, Kobe, where can the people find you? Um, you guys can find me at kicking it with Kolbs, um, where hopefully, hopefully I'll keep posting at some point um i think i uh just hit 800 subscribers on youtube let's so go that was pretty cool. yeah yeah that's so. huge um you can find me at texas cleat collector um i think i just hit like six subscribers on youtube so let's go bro let's yeah go. for one little 60 second video that's not horrible uh same on uh instagram um you can find us at bootcast pod on instagram where we like to make posts and let you guys know when the new episode's going to come out. Um, let me think. Oh, yeah. Guys, so James and them and the guys over at the football boot. Uh, what football is it? The football, football boot hour. Sorry, I'm like running on fumes right now. Uh, they did a QA and a episode. It is are. late. <laughs> and I've had a long weekend. Uh, they did a and a episode. So if you guys have any questions that you want us to answer, whether it comes down to our pred uh soul plates breaking or if you just want to ask you about how my day is um let us know in the comments below send us a dm we always reach out we'll answer any questions on the podcast and with that i think we'll say good night all right take care good night